Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and I'm here to do a review of the Canon EOS M3. I got into the original M several years ago and it actually served me well despite its obvious limitations. In fact, it has been moved on to my son Samuel who is now producing some great images with it himself. But I decided to move to the M3. I skipped the M2 which was not released in North America and was kind of a marginal um, update over the original M. But with the M3 there are a number of notable upgrades that made me want to take the plunge. And including in those, one of the biggest ones is a lot of changes to the overall actual build. The original M had next to no grip. It wasn't a very natural to hold um, and to, to use because there really wasn't much to hang on to. The M3 is vastly improved and now has one of the best grips for any um, mirrorless body out there. It's very natural to hang on to. And of course it helps with one of the features of the M system is using um, EF lenses through the adapter on the mirrorless system and so uh, it certainly helps when using more bulky lenses to have a much uh, easier thing to hang on to. That grip is now fantastic and it's a very natural way to grip it and to use it like a real camera. There have also been a number of changes to with the addition of new dials, um, the overall physical controls, although there was a nice touchscreen on the original M, um, the actual physical controls were somewhat limited and ergonomics weren't always fantastic. It's vastly improved with the M3 um, with both the addition of several new dials including uh, one right near the shutter so that you can change aperture or shutter speed. Very, very welcome. It has a more complete dial with all the modes, uh, different modes here. And then finally it's added on another dial along the top that allows you to change exposure value on the fly and up to uh, three stops in either direction. That is a very, very welcome addition. On the back, there are also a, a few additional buttons that can be programmed for dis different functions, plus just a more logical layout of the controls themselves. Add to that that now the uh, touchscreen is a tiltable LCD that will allow you to uh, reverse selfie mode here, but also if you're shooting down here, um, say shooting video or shooting at a low angle for macro, it's very easy to use, or if you're using it up high, it can be tilted down. The only thing that I wish is that it was an actual fully articulating LCD like on say my Canon 70D body simply because really this tilting only helps when you are composing in horizontal mode. If you're in vertical mode, it's not really going to help in hardly any situation and uh, because it can't really tilt on that axis. And so I prefer the fully articulating, but nonetheless, this is a very, very welcome addition and one that comes in very, very handy in a number of applications. On top of that, um, before the original M had no built-in flash unit, relying on the 90EX flash unit um, that was sold in kit with it sometimes, or of course you could mount any uh, Canon compatible speed mount or speed light to the uh, hot shoe. Of course the 90EX is still compatible with the M3 on its hot shoe, but it now has a built-in little flash unit that enables you to uh, always have a flash with you. And one other nice feature, although it's not a particularly powerful flash, um, it's better than nothing in some situations, but one thing that I have found is that because of its design, whether that's intentional or not, with the finger when you go to take the shot, you can actually um, tilt the flash unit up. And so as a result, it'll allow you to use bounce flash, um, not to lock it in a bounce flash position, but at the very least, you can um, compose your shot and then uh, get that uh, flash unit tilted up and voila, you can bounce flash really that easily. And of course, then it folds back in nice and compactly. And so uh, that's certainly a nice upgrade to the overall build. It also has improved connectivity, including um, Wi-Fi built into it now, as, long as, as well as uh, near field communications. 
Another big improvement to the M3 is inside. It now is, is faster overall. It has a slightly better buffer performance. Its shooting rate is still 4.2 frames per second, but of course it's pushing more data. Since now the M3 comes, instead of the 18 megapixel sensor, it now has a 24, a little over 24 megapixel uh, sensor that really is uh, quite impressive inside. As a result, image quality, which was always a strength for this line, is now even better. And I find that even when doing a, a high ISO comparison, that uh, the performance is incredibly improved with the M3, even despite the uptick in the resolution. As a result, you're able to shoot all the way up to ISO 12,800 and still get reasonable um, results. A, a fairly heavy grain, but next to no banding if you're shooting raw, and the overall results, in my opinion, are quite usable. There is an expandable setting of ISO 25,600, but I wouldn't really recommend using that because image quality does start to suffer there. Overall, I've also found that I feel like I have more latitude in processing images from the M3, more latitude to push shadows or pull down highlights, so it seems like the dynamic range of the camera is slightly better as well. Um, then one of the also uh, very nice additions is while it does not have a built-in EVF, and of course some of its competitors do, it does now have the option of using uh, Canon's EVF DC1 electronic viewfinder. And that mounts via the hot shoe, and uh, it has, adds a lot of um, just flexibility to the overall camera and its functionality. It's particularly useful, I find, when using longer focal lengths like, for example, the 55 to 200 millimeter STM lens. Um, and, and at longer telephoto lengths, I just find using a viewfinder is a much easier shooting experience than trying to use the LCD in that kind of setting. A couple of nice features on the, uh, the EVF is that it has a, a, a sensor, so when your eye comes close, it automatically switches to the the view image to the EVF turns off the LCD, and then if you pull your eye away, it will automatically switch back to the LCD. On top of that, the um, M3 does include some nice manual focus aids, including um, more logical controls for magnifying the image, which it can be magnified within the viewfinder. It also adds um, focus peaking with some options for that, which is very, very helpful. The EVF show, shows true depth of field, so that also helps with visually confirming focus. And one other nice addition is that now there is a dedicated manual focus button on the back of the camera. And so if you happen to be um, shooting and for whatever reason autofocus isn't doing what you want and you want to manual focus, you can even, with any of the STM lenses, you can turn off the autofocus right there and begin to uh, manually focus the lens, which is certainly a nice addition because before, because there are no actual switches on any of these STM lenses for the uh, M system, I meant you had to go into the menus before to disable autofocus and switch to manual focus. And so that certainly is also a very welcome addition. In a lot of ways, the M3 has moved further and uh, moved along, but in some ways it's still not competitive. As I've mentioned, that uh, burst rate is still rather low at only 4.2 frames per second. It also um, is not going to really accurately um, autofocus in between those shooting frames. One issue that is resolved from the original M is that when you took a shot with the original M, the LCD would black out and it would be several seconds before it would refresh and be ready to compose once again. That's not at all an issue with the M3. The refresh is near instantaneous and you're ready to compose and shoot again almost instantly. However, if you're shooting raw, the buffer still fills up far too fast. And um, you can put in about five or so um, raw images, but then it will have to pause and the frame rate will drop down to about one frame per second and so that the buffer can fill. Now, if you're shooting JPEGs, the, the limit before was 17 JPEGs uh, before the buffer would fill with the M Classic. Now you can shoot JPEGs essentially unlimited. However, the actual applications for that are somewhat few and far between. The biggest issue, of course, is that that frame rate is still rather low, particularly when compared to a few of the Sony competitors that will shoot as many as 11 plus frames per second. And so uh, Canon has lagged behind in that aspect. There's also a few quirks um, compared to the original, even compared to the M Classic. 
For one thing, if you like to do auto exposure bracketing for HDR or luminosity masking, um, before you could just shoot along at the typical burst rate. Now, for whatever reason, it seems like a, a firmware quirk, but uh, if you are trying to do auto exposure bracketing, it reverts to that one frame per second kind of single shot mode, which means that there's a much greater likelihood of some camera shake in between shots, or even if you're on a tripod of there being a bit of subject movement during that time. A bit of an annoyance there. Another quirk is that before, if you were magnifying the image, you could autofocus. If you want a little bit more precise focus, you could magnify that image and then autofocus. You can still magnify the image with the M3, but for whatever reason, when you hold down the shutter halfway to achieve autofocus, it switches back out to the unmagnified view. Kind of a weird quirk. And then if you're in video mode, it won't allow you to magnify the image at all. And if you want to manually focus kind of before starting video, it's a bit of a bother. And so often I will switch it into a stills mode, magnify the image, achieve the proper focus, and then switch back to video. And so there's a workaround, but Really, should you have to do that? You didn't have to do it with the M Classic. The original M felt like a really dense, really well-made um, camera body um, that kind of belied its small size. The uh, M3 feels a little bit more plastically, but that really is just perception. It also has a magnesium alloy frame and it has the same kind of coatings on the outside. So it's a sturdy, tough camera. It just, for whatever reason, doesn't give you that same kind of impression of quality and denseness when you pick it up that the original M did. Still an incredibly liberating thing to go along with a very light kit. I mean, I can pack along, say these four lenses and a, a small camera bag and be out jogging or hiking and not feel the weight at all. And, and still bring home some incredible images that really without, unless you're in a situation where the, the full frame advantage shows itself, in many situations, the, the images that come out of the M3 are indistinguishable from what I'm shooting with my full frame uh, bodies. And so really the image quality is very impressive. That's always been a strength for this line. And I think it's taken a step further with the higher resolution sensor and better processing that's in the M3. Canon still has really limited lens choices. In fact, I've got most of them sitting on this table, save the 11 to 22 millimeter um, STM lens. So still, it's only the 22 millimeter F2, which by the way, is still the killer lens to have for the kit. There is the original 18 to 55 um, STM. This is the kind of the original kit lens. They also introduced the 55 to 200 STM lens that I've got mounted on the camera right now. It, it's a, a very nice compact telephoto option, um, but Canon really hasn't done much in terms of primes or macro lenses. And still one of my favorite lenses for the system, EFM mount, is not really a Canon lens at all. It's this Rokinon 12 millimeter F2. I like that it's got the fast aperture. I like the fact that it's got a great wide focal length and amazing sharpness. It's a good astro lens, so good for, it has low coma and a great performance. And it has 67 millimeter front filter threads. And so you can use a lot of relatively cheap um, filters on it. And so it's a very compelling wide angle option. The 11 to 22 millimeter is also an excellent um, wide angle lens. But as you can see overall, there really aren't a lot of options in this kit. And that brings me to one final downside to the M3. Kind of the selling feature for the M system has been the ability to use all of your EF lenses. When you use the adapter, that will allow you to retain autofocus and to mount lenses. And by the way, this little 40 millimeter F 2.8 pancake lens is still one of the best lenses to mount because size wise and in its operation, it feels like a native lens. But unfortunately, when using the EF adapter, in many cases, it feels like lenses don't perform as well as what they did on the original EOS M. To me, it seems like the focus system has changed in the M3 and the adapter is not caught up to that. Its algorithms or however it helps to achieve focus from the EF mounted lenses, it's not quite up to spec. And I really feel like Canon needs to release an updated um, version of the EF adapter to help lenses perform better on the M3. And a number of these quirks that I've noted really could be addressed through firmware and perhaps hopefully will be addressed that way. But right now, the, Canon, the actual Canon ESM3 feels a little bit unfinished. 
And as a result, there are some added frustrations, even compared to the original M Classic, that shouldn't be there. If you are an existing Canon user like myself, the appeal of being able to use some of your existing lenses on a small, very portable mount is very uh, is seductive indeed. And in that aspect, the M3 is still a very capable backup camera or light option. For the way that I use it, I'm delighted with the M3. It produces great results and I can deal with its quirks because I don't rely on it. But if you are not an existing Canon user and you are cross shopping the M3 with perhaps some of the other options out there, it might be a bit of a tough sell to go with the M3 because in some ways it's been outpaced by its rivals and autofocus and video mode capability and some of the other feature sets. Finally, I'm going to add end on a positive note, however. While the battery life is not rated all that different from the original M, 220 shots for this, 230 for the M3, something weird happened because while I barely got the rated amount of shots out of the M Classic, in the M3, it feels like I can shoot all day and then some. In fact, I've gotten not just more than 230 frames out of it, I've often gotten 600 and 700 and 800 shots plus out of a single battery charge. So for whatever reason, although it's not rated a lot better, the battery life in the M3, in my experience, and I found it to be the experience of a number of other people out on the um, internet, and you can always trust the internet, that uh, people's experience is the same, and people are getting far more than the um, rating, rating on the actual battery life. That's a nice plus, and for once, I don't feel like I'm always running out of battery in a miller mirrorless body. So overall, the M3 is um, a nice yet flawed camera. If you uh, go in it with your eyes open as I did, there's a lot I think you're going to be happy with. Whether or not you purchase the EVF, um, it's a very capable camera and the overall handling, handling and ergonomics are vastly improved on the EOS M3. And, uh, and so I do give it a, a recommendation so long as you go in aware of its limitations and don't expect too much from it. I'm Dustin Abbott. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Have a great day.